We're going to talk about how to create what we call game ready assets, which can be actually a 3D model, an animation, a piece of audio or anything else that needs to be imported into a video game engine in order to be used to create a video game. Today we're going to talk about how to create 3D models or what we call game ready 3D models specifically. This is probably the most time consuming process because we need to go through some necessary and important steps in order to get what we are after correctly. Number one, creating the high poly model. The first thing we need to do is to create the high poly model, which is something that you can do in any 3D standard modeling application like Blender, 3ds Max, Maya, Cinema 4D, Moto, and so on. What we need to do is to create a model that is very detailed and has everything that needs to be shown on the surface. You can start by creating a basic piece of geometry, then you're going to start building details as you go further. If you're working on something that is going to be complicated to follow, you need a blueprint in the background in order to use it as a guide to get proportions right. Or if you are working on something that doesn't need to be very specific, you can use reference images that you can throw on your second monitor. And you can use one of the best softwares for this job, which is Pure Ref. For the most part, this is the most time consuming process when it comes to creating your game ready asset or model because it involves creating a thing from scratch. And sometimes you need to pause and think about what you're doing through the creation process. It's going to take a few minutes to one hour if it is something simple and sometimes it will take weeks if it is something complicated and highly detailed but in the end if you put in the time it will be something that is going to be worthwhile and it is going to pay off later in the next stages of producing your game ready model. Number two, sculpting. Sometimes if the 3D model needs more details that cannot be achieved in the 3D application, we're going to have to use sculpting application like ZBrush which deals with millions of polygons to add extra details like scratches, skin imperfections, damage or anything else that requires extra attention to details. But not all models will need sculpting so this is kind of something that we need to do if necessary, in order to show our game ready model in a better way. Sculpting can be used to create better looking characters. Sculpting also can be used to create props, even small props. Sometimes we can also need sculpting for environmental elements like rocks, walls, or anything else that you see in the environment that needs more than straight or flat polygons in order to show its essence and details. Number three, the low poly model. Since this is going to be a game ready model that we are going to work on here, we can throw a model that has hundreds of thousands or even millions of polygons in a game engine. That is why we're going to need to create a low poly version of our model. There are many ways of creating a low poly model and there are many approaches to achieving different results. Some of these methods are more accurate and some of them are kind of faster and give us different results. And you need to choose what you want depending on the kind of geometry and the overall shape of this model that you are working on. But the goals are the same at the end of the day. The purpose of creating a low poly model is the fact that what a game engine can handle or what a game console or hardware in general is limited. A game engine in general can't run many millions of polygons in one scene in the same time, at least not in the time being of today's technology. Probably in the future uh, we're going to do this and this is going to be possible, but for right now we're limited to how many polygons we can put in our games, and this is due to memory and processing power. In the process of creating the low poly model we need to reduce all the unnecessary polygons, vertices and edges that don't really affect the overall silhouette of our model, especially when we have flat surfaces, we need to get rid of as much as possible or as we can of the extra polygons and edges without really affecting the overall silhouette and the shape of our model because what we are basically doing is kind of matching the shape of the low poly to the high poly model in order to perform the process of baking later to extract the details from the high poly model and bake them on top of the low poly model which we'll emphasize in the baking step later. Number four, UV unwrapping. Creating good UVs is a very important part of creating a low poly 3D model or a game ready 3D model because making any mistakes here is going to be very devastating in the next steps of the process because everything else is going to be done later going to be based on it. Creating UVs or the process of UV unwrapping for game ready 3D models is different from let's just say subdivision models which are basically models that can be used or created for cinematics architectural purposes, 
visualization. First of all, a low poly model has significantly fewer polygons than subdivision model, which depending on the shape of our asset is going to be harder or easier. If you take a look at UVs from a game ready 3D model, and uh, for subdivision models, you're going to see that in subdivision models, you're going to have fewer pieces that are scattered in the UV template. But in the game ready model UV template, you're going to see many pieces. That's because in order to see better baking results when it comes to low poly models, we need to break the UVs when we have hard edges or hard corners. That's why a simple box needs to be broken to six UV shells. But in subdivision models, you can actually use only one UV shell. Also, this will allow us later in the process of text to see better results and generate more accurate maps that will allow us more flexibility and more control over the process of texturing that we're gonna go through. Of course there is more to UV unwrapping than what we mentioned here and there are some rules we need to respect in order to create better UVs and this will help us generate better results. When we are done with the process of UV unwrapping of our pieces, we're going to attach them and put them in one place, creating what we call the UV template. This UV template is going to be imported with our model when we import later to a texturing software like Substance Painter. Number five, naming parts. Organizing your game ready model is a crucial thing for multiple reasons. Number one, for the mere fact that it is actually a good thing to work in an organized manner and create models that you are going to go back knowing that you are going to find pieces according to the name process or to the naming process that you used and it is of course a good way to teach yourself how to work in an organized manner to become an organized professional reason number two is the fact that in order to perform the baking process inside substance painter let's just say you need to actually have a high poly model and a low poly model that are named properly and accordingly meaning the high poly and the low poly pieces that are identical need to have similar names. The only difference is gonna be in the suffix, which is going to be the main difference. This way, a software such as Substance Painter will be able to tell which piece is which, and it will be able to bake each piece individually like it is not part of the whole model, which is going to allow us to have perfect bake later that allows us to spend an easy time texturing. Number six, baking. After you export your high poly model and your low poly models from the 3D uh, program, you will import them into Substance Painter. First of all, you will import the low poly model and you will start doing the baking. Baking is a very important process, as we said before, because it allows us to bake the details from the high poly and transfer them to the low poly, which will give us the benefits of both in, in the same time which is a low poly count and lots of details that we were able to see only on the high poly version before. In the past, this process was a little bit hard to do and it was less accurate than it is today for those who don't have enough experience. It used to be done using a method that we call the exploded bake, which involves separating all the pieces manually apart like a grenade exploded inside the model and they should be scattered in all directions in space kind of isolating them from each other to avoid interference and projection issues with each other. But uh, now things are better, faster, and easier thanks to software like Substance Painter. Number seven, texturing. After the process of baking is over, your model will be ready to be textured and using a physically based rendering software such as Substance Painter, you'll be able to use smart materials, smart masks, and lots of procedural tools that will allow you to get better and faster results. The procedural texturing software made the process a whole lot easier. In the past, texturing was done in a software such as Photoshop, which requires you to start creating textures for individual models from scratch, which was a lot more time consuming and it was something that required lots of manual adjustments, tweaking in order to give your textures some extra attention. Number eight, testing in a game engine or a real time renderer. After the process of texturing is over, your model is technically ready to be thrown in a game engine in order for you to be able to test it and apply textures that you exported from the texturing software in order to see how it fits the environment and to see if it is something that you expected in the first place. Testing your model in a real-time renderer or in a game engine is important because sometimes there are going to be flaws that you don't see unless you do this, especially if this is something that you are going to deliver to uh, some people who are going to use it, for example, if you are going to sell this model 
to people online that need you in order to gain some extra time by purchasing assets. They don't want to go through the hassle of finding the model, purchasing it, and then in the end they'll discover that it has some errors that you didn't see because you didn't test properly. Also, exporting your model into a real-time renderer like Marmoset can be useful for presentation purposes. For example, if you want to showcase your model to someone, then you need actually to do some core renders inside a game engine or inside Marmoset in order to show or present your model the best way possible. So in this video we went through 8 steps of creating low poly 3D models for video games and the process of course is not limited to what we mentioned here. You can add, you can subtract depending on what you actually use in order to get this thing done. If you have something to add in the comment section below, also you can check some of our previous videos. Thank you very much and I will see you in the next one.